Diddy party stories, they're our favorite genre of anecdote. If oh, you really? have one, yeah. Wow, okay, I've got a lot I can't tell. <laughs> so, um, <sighs> can't tell that one either. Four times, just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling <laughs> you about. Right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. That's all that happens at Diddy parties. Money and s so, with all the buzz surrounding Sean Diddy Combs and the whole world peering into his business, with even more heat from the feds and the public, it seems like more folks are getting dragged into the drama with him. His longtime friend Ashton Kutcher seems to be the latest celebrity caught up in the mix. These two have been tight for decades, bonding over their shared ventures in the entertainment industry. Their friendship blossomed in 2003 while both were busy producing shows for MTV. It was during this time that Kutcher, fresh off the launch of his hit prank show Punked, received a call from Diddy, and before you know it, they were pounding the pavement together, tackling the New York City Marathon like champs. Since then, they've been inseparable. However, recent developments have thrown Ashton into the spotlight alongside Diddy, and it all comes down to some remarks Ashton made in the past that have resurfaced. You see, during an interview with Sean Evans on the spicy wing-eating extravaganza known as Hot Ones, Ashton was asked about his friendship with Sean Combs and the notorious parties that Diddy was known for throwing. Ashton's response was initially brushed off, but with the mount accusations against Diddy, people are now revisiting those comments. Ashton coyly dodged the question, suggesting there were things he couldn't divulge, cryptically stating, I've got a lot I can't tell, followed by a pause and a cautious, I can't tell that one either. Wow, okay, I've got a lot I can't tell. So, um, can't tell that one either. Back then, it was all in good fun, just a couple of pals having a laugh. But now, with federal agents raiding Diddy's pad in connection to a probe, folks are raising their eyebrows at Ashton's words. They're wondering if he was privy to more than he let on about those parties. Did he turn a blind eye to something shady going down? And this isn't the first time Ashton's found himself in hot water with the public. Just last year, he and his wife Mila Kunis caught flack for standing by their That 70s Show co-star Danny Masterson, who was convicted of two women and currently serving 30 years in prison. After Masterson's sentencing took place, Kunis and Kutcher were revealed to be among a group of close friends and family members to have submitted messages on behalf of the defendant. Both stars spoke to Masterson's character, urging the judge to impose a shorter sentence. Kutcher called his co-star, whom he also starred alongside in Netflix sitcom The Ranch, a role model and a person that is consistently there for you when you need him. While Kunis called Masterson an amazing friend, confident, and above all, an an outstanding older brother figure to me. When letters supporting Masterson surfaced, Ashton and Mila faced immediate backlash, especially considering their involvement in Thorn, a charity fighting against SEX exploitation of children. Following the intense backlash against their letters, Kutcher and Kunis released an apology video, which was widely criticized and mocked online for appearing insensitive and insincere. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson, Kutcher said in the clip. Kunis added, we support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. Kutcher explained that Masterson's family had contacted his former co-stars about writing the character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years, with Kunis stating, the letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. In addition, they stepped down from their leadership roles at Thorn, the anti-child SA organization that Kutcher founded in 2009 with ex-wife Demi Moore. Now, word on the street is that Ashton Kutcher's past remarks might have landed him in some hot water. Rumor has it that federal investigators are pretty interested in what exactly went down at those infamous ditty parties that Ashton hinted at but didn't spill the beans on. Apparently, subpoenas are flying left and right, targeting anyone who might have partied with Diddy. Now, Ashton's name is expected to pop up on those subpoenas as part of the investigation. And if they find any evidence, well, things could get serious. That they're issuing subpoenas to a lot of people right now to get a better understanding of what that looks like. And if that's the case, 
and Ashton Kutcher was issued a subpoena. It's starting to feel like a whole lot of people might be caught up in Diddy's mess. Maybe that's why some folks are keeping their distance and steering clear of any association with him. After all, nobody wants to get tangled up in a investigation and all that negative publicity. Even Cat Williams has had his say, warning folks to steer clear of Diddy's parties because they're never just your run-of-the-mill gatherings. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. Also, Jaguar Wright spilled that Diddy often throws parties, inviting young men in the industry who are subjected to A in exchange for promises of money and fame. Jaguar highlighted a specific incident where a female lawyer stumbled upon a young artist performing explicit acts on Diddy in his office. When she walked in, the door wasn't locked, so she didn't think twice about just walking in. And when she walked in, she saw uh, Christopher Williams perform a on Puff. In her interview, Jaguar claimed that these parties also saw the participation of other male members of the Hollywood elite engaging in various SEX activities. Diddy himself has openly admitted to introducing artists like Usher to the adult lifestyle when they were still minors. And who can forget when Diddy invited Fabulous to one of these parties? Fabulous later revealed that the all-male gathering was so charged with erotic energy that he had to make up an excuse about going to the bathroom just to escape. Joe Rogan also spilled on his podcast about how wild Diddy's parties can get. He even shared a story about Luke from Two Live Crew bouncing out of one of Diddy's because things were just too crazy. Luke from Two Live Crew? Yeah, he said he was to leave early. Yeah. Or something like <laughs> when Luke from Two Live Crew is leaving early, like, you got a wild party. Now let's do a quick recap on what the drama is about. So, Diddy's homes in Los Angeles and Miami were searched because he is a target of a federal investigation carried out by a Department of Homeland Security team that handles human TFK the probe is being led by the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York and carried out by the Department of Homeland Security Investigation's Transnational Organized Crime Division. The investigation stems from many of the same allegations put forth by several civil lawsuits filed in New York against Combs, with allegations of S.A., including one filed in December in federal court that also included allegations of S.E.X.T.F.K. Heavily teams of HSI agents searched Combs' homes, some riding in armored vehicles, in part because authorities believed Combs employs private security at each of his residences. Agents were authorized to search for documents, phones, computers, and other electronic devices that hold data or videos. HSI in New York said it executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation in cooperation with local law enforcement and HSI units in Los Angeles and Miami and would provide further information as it becomes available. Now, people were saying that Diddy fled his mansion, and when the authorities showed up, they didn't find him, but they did detain his two sons Christian and Justin, which some people find really sad that Diddy just left his children hanging like that. Christine, one of the many burning questions today is where is he? Where was Sean Diddy Combs while these raids were being carried out at his residences? His children could have been in serious danger because if you know anything about Homeland Security, they do not play. I mean, they show up there with their guns and tanks. It's very intimidating and they will attack if they feel there's a hint of a th so folks were understandably shocked that Diddy would leave his kids potentially in harm's way like that. There were even whispers that he jetted off to some private island, with authorities hot on his tail. But it turns out, he wasn't on that jet at all. In fact, he was spotted pacing outside Miami airport. I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, Diddy. So, some people think he was trying to throw them off his scent, cooking up some sneaky plan to skip town without a trace. Then the following day, Diddy's attorney issued a statement denouncing the raid. Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way, Aaron Dyer said. This unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced, coordinated media presence, leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Also, Chris Hansen dropped some serious 
serious intel about the Homeland Security raid on Diddy's crib. Basically, he's saying that when it comes to something as serious as human TFK, you don't just skate by unless you're giving up some major players. But here's the thing, this investigation was so hush-hush that even some of the agents raiding the place didn't know whose house they were hitting until they showed up. It's like they were keeping it under wraps to avoid any leaks or tips that could have tipped off Diddy. HSI, so much so that even some of the agents on the raid didn't know whose house they were raiding until they got there. That's how closely held this wow, investigation. Wow, because there could have been a tip. Absolutely. Now, going back to the lawsuits, which may have prompted this investigation, the lawsuits accused Combs of multiple horrific crimes and acts, RSA, and A, blowing up someone's car, involvement in shootings, and narcotics possession, engaging in even spiking the drinks of minors. The lawsuit painted a harsh picture, claiming Diddy M worded and A Ed Cassie when she was 19 and he was 37. It also spilled details about substance A allegedly pushed by Diddy, messing up Cassie's life. Sean Diddy Combs, the rapper and music mogul, is accused of and years of abuse in a new lawsuit filed by R&B singer Cassie. Cassie describing the music mogul as a vicious, cruel, and controlling man, saying she was trapped and held down by Combs. She's now suing him for what she says happened during what she's calling a of abuse. According to the lawsuit, Diddy was running the show in Cassie's life, from her finances to digging into her medical records. Cassie spilled that an MRI showed memory loss, blaming it on Diddy's aggression and the pills he pushed her to take, especially loads of painkillers. Back in 2016, Cassie tried to cut ties with Diddy, and things got absolutely insane. The cops had to step in, but she didn't press charges because she was genuinely scared of Diddy's unpredictable nature. After their intense fights, he tried to smooth things over by showering her with fancy gifts, but the on Cassie told a completely different story. He ended up hiding her away in hotels for recovery. Diddy was also accused of using Cassie in some seriously messed up ways, even getting her involved with other male escorts. Apparently, he got a sick thrill out of watching her with other dudes. The situation reached a new level with Cassie engaging in explicit activities, labeled as freak-offs for cash. And get this, Diddy supposedly recorded it all, not for any good reason, but to keep Cassie in check and to expose her if she tried to take legal action. Escaping this crazy situation was no walk in the park for Cassie. Diddy, described as a force, used his connections to cut her off from friends and family, instilling fear for her safety. In 2018, he's even accused of barging into her apartment and forcing her into non-consensual acts. Even after Cassie managed to escape, Diddy's behavior stayed nut, with him trying to keep tabs on her every move. And just when you thought Diddy couldn't catch a break, he's hit with more serious accusations. An unnamed woman just dropped a lawsuit claiming that back in 1990 or 1991, Diddy and R&B singer Aaron Hall aid her and her friend at Hall's place. She and her friend supposedly met Diddy and Hall at an MCA event. Things got sketchy with the guys getting flirty and handsy. Post-event, Diddy and Hall invite them to an after-party at Hall's pad. According to the lawsuit, Jane Doe was coerced into SEX with Diddy, and then Hall allegedly forced her friend into it. Then days later, Diddy supposedly shows up at Jane Doe's place, gets all angry, and allegedly aed and chokes her until she passes out. Why? The lawsuit claims he was worried the friend would spill the beans to the girl he was with at the time. Then another lawsuit hits him. This time, the alleged victim was just 17 and in 11th grade when she says Diddy, his bad boy president Harv Pierre, and some unnamed third person did some heinous stuff to her. Serious trigger warning stuff. The lawsuit spills out disturbing details of an alleged 2003 attack in Diddy's studio. The woman claims she met Harv Pierre in a Detroit lounge, got f***ed up, and then things took a dark turn in the studio in New Jersey. Transporting a minor across state lines kind of situation shades of R. Kelly vibes. Jane Doe claims she was chilling at a lounge in Detroit with a friend like two decades ago. Harve Pierre spots her, starts throwing compliments about her looks, and brags about being BFFs with Combs. Then, he tells her Diddy would love to meet her, gives Combs a call right there, and the music big shot personally invites her on a spontaneous trip to New York on a private jet. According to the lawsuit, that private jet ride took the teen to Teterboro Airport in New Jersey. From there, they hopped into an SUV with Pierre and another mystery guy, heading to the studio where Diddy was doing his thing with some artists. The legal doc, snagged by Rolling Stone, even has color pics supposedly from inside Daddy's house recording studio that night, and one of them shows the teen sitting on Diddy's lap. The claim is, they kept plying her with a ton of booze and stuff, while Diddy, Pierre, and the third dude wouldn't let up with the advances, constantly getting handsy with her. Things take a dark turn in the lawsuit. As the teen gets more and more wasted, everything starts to get hazy. Allegedly, Diddy takes her
her to a bathroom, strips off her skirt and undies, and, well, you know. The lawsuit filed in the Southern District of New York says she didn't agree to any of it, but Diddy just keeps going. At one point, he apparently turns her around, tells her to squeeze his nips to help him finish, then goes back to doing his thing. Miss Doe did not consent to having SEX with Mr. Combs, but he continued thrusting. At some point, Mr. Combs turned Miss Doe around to face him. He told her that he could not a word and asked her to squeeze his nips as hard as she could to help him get off. He then turned her back around and continued to R-word her, the lawsuit alleges. The teen is kind of fading in and out, and when she checks the mirror over the sink, she sees that the mystery guy from the plane has taken over, doing some messed up stuff from behind. And get this, Diddy's just chilling in a chair right outside the bathroom, watching the whole messed up scene unfold. In Doe's story, the mystery guy doesn't pay attention to her begging him to stop. Eventually, he steps aside so Pierre can have a go. According to her, Pierre starts with something non-consensual and ends by making her do something she didn't want to. In a pretty forceful way, Miss Doe remembers that Mr. Pierre was sweaty and that she had difficulty breathing, the lawsuit alleges. When Mr. Pierre finished, he left Miss Doe in the bathroom alone. Miss Doe fell into the fetal position and lay on the floor. Her V was in pain, so once the teen kinda got herself together, with a bit of help, they took her back to the airport and flew her back to Michigan. The lawsuit, which also calls out Daddy's House recordings and Bad Boy Entertainment, mentions she's got hazy memories of the flight back and only really recalls being in her car super early in the morning. And finally, Lil Rod, who recently sued his collaborator for $30 million and accused him of SEX him and women him and several other acts. Jones also alleges Combs forced him to engage in unwelcome acts with and that Combs and his staff engaged in, quote, serious illegal activity. He is seeking $30 million. He claimed that Diddy his and touched his He believes that Diddy was him to have uh, He says that Diddy downplayed it just like he, as a joke, like, yeah, we just playing around. Um, just horse was, playing. Yeah. Among the laundry list of accusations from Lil Rod's lawsuit is that Diddy allegedly strong-armed Jones into arranging encounters with SEX workers and pressuring him into participating in some seriously unwanted bedroom activities. Not just with these workers, but with others too. And if that's not enough to make your jaw hit the floor, Diddy supposedly served up sp drinks to unsuspecting guests at his swanky parties. According to the lawsuit, there are even screenshots supposedly showing gatherings at Diddy's that included underage girls and more SEX workers. And some of these ladies allegedly had their drinks tampered with at Diddy's direction. This legal bombshell also called out some other names like about Diddy's right-hand woman, Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Habtamarium. They're all caught up in this legal whirlwind. Jones says in the lawsuit that Grange, Habtamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group effectively worked together with Combs in a RICO enterprise that failed to adequately monitor, warn, or supervise the actions of Combs, his son, and his chief of staff. A RICO enterprise is any individuals or groups that act together to violate the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. And Jones isn't just looking for a slap on the wrist here, he's aiming high, seeking a cool $30 million in damages. But an attorney for Combs is slamming Jones' claims as pure fiction, straight up calling them out as a cheap ploy to grab headlines. We have overwhelming indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones' attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored, as Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls, the attorney Sean Hawley said in a statement. We will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. Now, according to Jones' lawsuit, he claims that back in August 2022, Diddy himself reached out to him to produce some tunes for the R&B album, The Love Album, Off the Grid, which ended up snapping snagging a Grammy nomination after its release in September 2023. But here's the kicker. Jones says his life took a nosedive after he agreed to work with Diddy. Jones alleges that Combs SEX aid him while he lived with him at Combs Homes in Florida, Los Angeles, and New York, as well as on a yacht Combs rented in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The harassment in A included constant unsolicited and unauthorized and touching of his A, according to the lawsuit. Jones says he was forced to work in Combs' bathroom as Combs showered glass enclosure. When he tried to raise the alarm about Diddy's behavior to Christina Corum, Diddy's right-hand woman, Jones claims she brushed it off as just friendly horseplay, stating that those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing that he likes you. The lawsuit accuses Coram of aiding and abetting Combs' S.A. of Jones and of working with Combs to G-word him into accepting a homo relationship. Jones also alleges that he was forced to solicit SEX workers and perform SEX acts with them to please Combs. To aid in the alleged recruitment, Jones said, 
Combs provided him with an exclusive Bad Boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to a Miami establishment as a signal to any SEX worker he approached that Combs was in town and had sent Jones to recruit them. Jones alleges Combs, whom he describes in the suit as forceful and demanding and someone who does not take no for an answer, leveraged his power as one of the most influential people in hip-hop and business to intimidate him, including by to inflict bodily harm if Jones did not comply with his demands. On one occasion, Jones alleges, Combs forced him to watch as he displayed and bragged about getting away with shooting people. In a separate incident, Jones alleges, Combs shared that he was responsible for a shooting in a nightclub in New York City in 1999 with the rapper Shine, born Jamal Barrow. A jury acquitted Combs of possession and charges in connection with that incident, while Barrow was sentenced to 10 years in jail. Jones was terrified of Combs and felt he could not tell him no, according to the suit. Mr. Combs consistently made it clear that he has immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement, the lawsuit says. Jones says in the lawsuit that he has video and audio evidence to support some of the allegations. The lawsuit says that Combs required Jones to record him constantly, and that on several occasions, Combs took Jones's cell phone to record himself. As a result, Jones alleges he has hundreds of hours of video and audio records of Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Jones says in the suit that he believes Combs also him on February 2, 2023. He alleges he woke up dizzy and confused in bed with Combs and two SEX workers. In response to a request for comment, Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, used a Latin phrase res ipsa loquitur, which loosely translates as the thing speaks for itself, referring to the lawsuit. Jones says in the suit that he was under an implied work-for-hire agreement and was not compensated for the songs he produced on The Love Album. As a result, the lawsuit says Combs, Love Records, Motown Records, and Universal Music Group were all unjustly enriched at his expense. This whole Diddy saga feels like it's never gonna end, right? And the crazy part is, it seems like as time goes on, more and more names are gonna get dragged into the mix alongside him. Can't help but wonder who's next to be dragged into the spotlight. Drop your thoughts on all this down below and we'll catch you in the next video.